So this is the Raid R2 switch. And no, I don't mean Raid as in like Raid Shadow Legends or some bullshit. It's spelled very strangely. It's spelled R-A-E-D from like AE boards. I don't really understand the name scheme they were going for, but I mean, I, it's, it's, a, it's a good switch. So when we take it apart, when we take it apart, boom, that's what happens because it's got a long ass fucking stem. I mean spring. It's not about the size of the spring, it's how you use it. And this spring is extremely long and double staged. Dude, I'm gonna be honest, I don't even know if this is in focus. We've got a long pull stem, it's a palm stem, nylon housing. I don't, I don't remember if I said that already, but nylon top, nylon bottom, palm stem. Now I've got a funny little thing to compare it to. So here's an alpaca stem, here is the raid stem, and here is the uh, stem of a kale burgundy... Um, whatever the reason why i'm using the kale burgundy stem is because a lot of people use them as franken switches for like uh black cherry pies they're also the same stem as a novel keys cream so that's why i'm comparing stem lengths either way uh i think it's important to mention that the raid stem is a perfect in between of the two switches in my opinion it leads to the switch having like a really nice crispy bottom out but without feeling like you're being stopped abruptly because of how short the travel distance is something else i want to talk about is this spring right here the spring the spring in my opinion, I think this is the perfect spring to pair with a long pull switch because it makes the bottom out feel extremely snappy and responsive. Like this this switch is extremely satisfying to type on. I will say though, don't don't fucking use this thing stock. Lube and film this switch. Um the factory lubing is extremely bad. Just don't just don't do it. I saw reviews and I thought that this would be like a good factory lube switch, but it's really not. No. Not even, not even close. Uh, so as I said, these are not switches that I would recommend using stock. So here is a very non-scientific sound test of a stock raid switch, an alpaca, lubed and filmed, a Cherry MX Hyperglide Black, which I think is the most fair comparison because it's a nylon switch, and a lubed and filmed raid switch. Also the, the MX Black is lubed and filmed, I don't know if I already said that, but... So all in all, would I recommend getting the Switch? Yes and no. I'd say yes if you're looking for a really nice introduction to long pull switches, but if you want to get a good stock Switch that you don't have to lube, you don't have to film, you don't have to do whatever, then don't get the Switch. The only problem that I have with the Switch is that it advertises itself as factory lubes, but it's really not. I swear to God, either like my, my factory lube dried up in the sun when it was being shipped to me or it was non-existent in the first place. There was like ever so slightly a semblance of factory lube, but it wasn't there. It also has some issues with leaf noise, um, but lubing behind the leaf kind of gets rid of that. So again, that adds to my point of if you want to put work into the Switch to make it sound good, you can make it sound really good. It's super nice, super clacky. It's the best of both worlds. Um, you can get like a really deep sounding switch or a really clacky switch, either one. I'm surprised at how deep it sounded considering it's a, a full nylon housing. Typically nylon housings are a bit scratchier, a bit higher pitch. I would have liked there to be more switch characteristic. I would have liked there to be more scratch. I'm a big fan of cherry scratch, okay? So I don't know, having a, a, a switch that is full nylon housing and feeling it be like really smooth, it feels kind of like a little bit unnatural in a way, but aside from that, I'd put the switch in, in, in a solid A tier. There's nothing, there's nothing special about it, there's nothing bad about it, it's smooth, it sounds good, you just have to lumen film it. 
but you could say the same thing about practically every single Switch. Except for, I don't know, maybe like, Gateron Milky Yellows. I've never been a fan of that Switch. I will never be a fan of that Switch. I'm a big fan of like, a more fuller sounding Switch, and that's just not it. I used to think that Alpacas were like, S plus tier, now they're on my A tier, so I don't know. Um, I definitely have a skewed perception of Switches, but I'll be reviewing a couple more. I'll be trying to get a little bit in, in depth with them a little bit more. I will sound test more Switches on this board. Uh, so that you guys can get a comparison of all of them. The only problem is that since I'm using this board plateless, which I feel is the best indicator of how a switch will sound, because, you know, it doesn't have the plate masking, it doesn't have the foam masking yet. Because I'm running plateless, I need 5-pin switches, otherwise I can't sound test, because the board doesn't fit it. So, that's that's why I couldn't give a full sound test of the MX Blacks, but... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably be doing Alpacas next, because Alpacas are just like, they're like the nostalgia switch, I guess? Like... I don't know, they, they were the first Switch that I ever was like, oh my god, I need it, and now I have them, and now I don't use them, ever. So, um, I don't know, I'll sound test those next, I'll do a review of them next, alpacas in the year 2022, how do they hold up type shit, but, I don't know, whatever. Bye. Bye.